All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. So today's video is just going to be a variety of topics. I really don't have a title for it or anything like that. Just going to bring out the scriptures and see where the spirit leads me. All right. And, uh, you know, pretty much as we all understand and know, we are in the last days. So we have to strengthen up. You know, we got to make sure we buckle up and get ready for what's getting ready to happen in the future, man. All right. Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. And the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is right around the corner. All right. And I'm using this camera. I'm hoping uh, you all can, you know, it's clear and everything like that. I'm not sure because I'm recording at new locations and I'm trying to get things back in order and everything like that. So hopefully everything is all right. But if not, you know, hopefully you all can at least hear me straight, you know, because <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to invest in a new camera soon. But, you know, that's definitely down the line. But uh, anyway, going, in, you know, back to what I was saying, we need to strengthen up. And make sure that we're prepared for what's getting ready to happen. We need to make sure that we maintain our faith while we fight this fight for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because at the end of the day, we all need faith and we need to believe. All right? Because when shit hit the fan, man, that's the only place you're going to have to lean to. That's the only place you're going to have to go to is that it's faith. If you don't have faith, man, you're not going to make it. Point blank, period. Because like I always like to say, if you are hesitant, you know, when the MOTB... It's mandatory and you're hesitant when that happens because you're not used to being without, you know, you may be in a situation where you get locked up in a FEMA camp or you get left in the wilderness. You start to realize that you can't find food three, four, five days at a time. You know, these things are going to happen. All right. It's going to get real ugly out here. So we got to prepare ourselves within the spirit, man. OK, like I said, if you are hesitant then that means the Holy Spirit is not upon you, man. When these things happen, you always and have to lean on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. All right? That's the only way that you're going to make it. If you're not trying to do that, then, like I said, it's over. It's over. You have no hope. Let's go straight into the scriptures, man. Let's just see what the Spirit does. Uh, this is Romans. We're going to start at Romans uh, 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. This is our service for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We are his servants. We go out there and we serve him by bringing out this word, man, repenting. You know, uh, rehearsing the commandments, statutes, and laws and doing what we're supposed to do by the Lord. All right? We go out to the highways and the byways. We do make our bodies a living sacrifice because we're putting ourselves out there in front of the elements, man. All right? But we have faith, though. We have faith that the Most High is going to protect us, look after us, and make sure that we bring out the word. And then, Lord willing, we can bring it out the next week, and then a week after, then a week after, all the way until the Lord returns, man. Or until uh, famine of the word hits. All right? So at the end of the day, this is what we're supposed to do. And verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So we're not supposed to be a part of this world, man. If you look back into the world and you start thinking about things that could possibly get you success, or you start thinking about actually taking the MOTB because you're getting tired of struggling, you want to find a way out, you can't do that, man. You cannot be conformed to this world. It's a be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind, that means you have to be born again man you have to get to the point where you literally only think about you how about shimmy how shot a majority of your day because ain't that what the scriptures say the scriptures say the whole duty of man is to follow the commandments statutes and laws the whole duty of man so every time and then that's another reason why you know you have these you have this you know you got the the border of blue you know you got the border of blue and the fringes is supposed to remind us remind us of the commandments right and who was the one that gave the commandments? The Most High. All right. Yeah, how about Shimmy Yahweh Shai gave these commandments, man? So, yeah, at the end of the day, this is what we think about 24-7. So, we're not supposed to be thinking about anything that's a part of this world. Because if you start getting to the point where you mix yourself in this world too much, you're going to get distracted. And more than likely, you're going to fall off, man. 
And that's a very, very, very scary thing, man. You do not want to fall out of this truth. Because what the scriptures say if you fall out of the truth? Let's get it real quick. As soon as, um, <laughs> of course, of course. All right, here we go. Let's get this real quick. Um, let me find it. Let me find it. Uh, this is Luke chapter 12. And let's start at, uh, let's start at 43. It says, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. All right. The ones that endure to the end and the ones that's, that's found working, the ones that's found uh, having faith within your how about Shemi Yahweh Shai, they're going to be rulers. The 144,000 are going to be rulers, man. All right. And that's exactly what we're grinding for, man. We're grinding so we can sit right beside your Yahweh Shai and rule the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. Verse 45, it says, But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in the day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in and sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So the ones that fell to the point where they got lazy, they thought that the Lord was going to return way sooner than what they are going through right now, what they thought and everything. You know, those are ones that lost the oil, man. Those are ones that lost the drive. They lost the spirit. What it say right here, man? They were out there, you know, being merry, eating and drinking, getting drunk. All right. They was enjoying the world. But we just read in Romans 12, it said, be not conformed to this world. Of course, you know, you may have your relaxed time and everything like that to the point where you just like, all right, look. You know, this is what I do in my free time. I have a little bit of fun so I can, you know, you know, release some stress, you know, just relax or whatever the case may be. But we don't let those things distract us, though, because at the end of the day, our whole thing is to bring out this word. We're supposed to be studying. We're supposed to be repenting daily, you know, looking in the mirror and making sure that we are examining ourselves to make sure that we are in the faith, that we truly believe in this. This is what we're supposed to be doing. If you get to the point where you literally always thinking about, man, what can I do with this this female today? What can I uh what bar can I go to? Or uh what can I do to make more money? You know, and then you find some type of opportunity where you can make more money, and now the majority of your time is going toward that. You'll be like, you'll get to the point where you'll stop thinking about this. You'll stop thinking about the Lord, man. Because you are what? You are out there uh having fun. And you thought the Lord's going to come already. This is the whole thing, man. This is the whole thing about enduring. All right? We got to have patience. The scriptures say that we're supposed to be patiently waiting on the return of our Lord, right? And it says the scriptures say as well that no man knows when that day is. So if you understand that, that means you got to come into this thing. And that means you just got to be patient. You can't, you know, of course he gave us signs to let us know that we're at the end. But we just don't know what day that is when the Lord is going to return. So now you got to buckle down, man. You got to buckle down. You can't be like, man, I thought this was going to happen already. I'm getting tired of doing this. You should never think like that, man. You should never get to the point where you be like, I'm getting tired of doing this. You getting tired of doing the work of the Lord? <laughs> what type of shit is that, man? How you going to get tired of doing the work of the Lord? This is the greatest gift that he gave us, man. He called us into the truth to understand who we are in the last days. We have a way bigger, you know, um, um, advantage over everybody else, man. Two thirds of our people don't want to hear this word, but we do. Every time we watch a video, every time we do this work, we should feel good about it. We should feel good that the most side is, is allowing us to bring out this word, man. Every single day you should wake up and be like, yeah, man, what, what lesson am I going to do today? What, what, what am I going to do to help feed the flock, man? This is the greatest job on earth. Like Apostle Tahar said, man, we are working for the king of the universe, man. Let's get, um, let's keep reading. And uh, let's start at uh, 46 again. It says, the Lord of that servant will come in the day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and would appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. That's right. The ones that was in the truth and you fell out, your portion is going to be with the people that didn't believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You already know what their uh, uh, end is. And we're going to get it. 
Verse 47, it says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Yeah, the ones that knew this truth, the ones that was in this truth, and the ones that knew what was going on, all right, helped bring out the word at one point and everything like that. You knew exactly what the names of the Lord and his son, uh, the Most High and his son was. You knew that you was an Israelite. You was bringing out the word to help wake up the rest of the elect and get them sealed. And then out of nowhere, for some reason, you just decided to just be like, oh, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. I thought the Lord would have came already. I, I, I can't do this no more, man. I got stuff to do in the world. You let something get to you. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be beat with many stripes. That's why it says, let's see. Uh, that's why it says, hold on, hold on. That's why it says, you know, that judgment was going to start with us. Judgment was going to begin with us, with the ones that knew that they were Israelites, all right? Because we know better, man. We know better, and that's the point. Uh, let's see. This is First Peter. Man, these ads, man. I gotta. I, I keep. I keep telling myself I gotta find another app. But anyway, this is uh First Peter chapter four. And let's just get to the point. This is verse 17. It says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? What's going to be the end of them? Let's get it. And for the ones that uh, knew the truth and then they fell out because you tasted this heavenly gift. What the, what's going to be the punishment for those people? I believe it's Revelation uh <coughs> So like it. I know, uh, let's see, I believe it's Revelation 21. Yeah, yeah, this is Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to start at 7. It says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his power, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And the second death represents the nuclear destruction that's getting ready to happen to uh, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, all right? America's going to be destroyed by World War III in one hour, all right? So the ones that was in this truth, you got to remember, judgment is going to begin with us because we know better, man. We knew that every single day we wasn't supposed to be eating pork. We wasn't supposed to be smoking blunts. We wasn't supposed to be celebrating holidays. We wasn't supposed to be shaving our beards, getting lineups, so forth and so on, man. We knew better. We knew what the Lord required, man. We knew that we supposed to be rehearsing these righteous acts and keeping the faith and showing our faith by doing this work, man. So if you came into this truth and you was like, yeah, I'm all for it. And out of nowhere, you're just like, uh, I'm not for it. What, it we just read it. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be in the lake of fire. And that's only if the most I choose is that death for you. He may do something else to you, man. He may get you to the point where you literally walk down the street and, 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 a, and, a, and a, a lion or a dog or whatever, or dogs. <laughs> With an S, man. Dogs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He may get you, man. He may have you starved to death. And the scriptures say that it's, uh, it's better to perish by the sword than to, be, than to starve to death. When you starve to death, man, your, your insides is eating you alive, man, because they try, it's trying to find something to keep you afloat. It's trying to find some type of new, new nutrients and energy so then you can stay alive, man. So guess what? If it can't find the, the food and the water that's, that you're supposed to have, guess what's going to happen, man? It's going to start attacking other areas in your body, man, and that's going to be a very, very painful death. Is it really that worth it because you didn't want to be a part of this truth? You got to remember what comes after the truth, man. You got to remember about, you got to think about the reward, man. You got to think about the reward. Let's, man. <laughs> you have to think about the reward, man, that the Most High, uh, that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is going to give us. Let's get, uh, what's that, Second Ezra's, hold on. Like I said, these apps, man, I always got these uh <laughs> these ads popping up, man. Hold on. 
And you get random phone calls. Everything just happened. <laughs> Everything just happening, man. All right, here we go now. Okay, this is second Ezra's. So like you. As soon as this ad is over. All right, this is second Ezra's, chapter two, and we're gonna start at um. 42, it says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. In the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Speaking about Yahweh Shai, all right? And uh, so he's speaking about Yahweh Shai and the elect. Verse 44, it says, So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned every seen palms, meaning victory. Okay? We confess the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is why we push the names so much, man, because those names are very important. If you don't push the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you are not going to make it, man. Point blank, period. You have to call on the correct ones. You still got Israelites out here that don't even call on the names, and we already know what group does that. But then you got the other Israelite uh, people out here too, like the Israel people. They don't call on them. They don't call on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. A lot of them still say Yah. A lot of them still say Yeshua, Yahweh, and things like that, man. They don't call on the correct names, but they know that they're Israelites though. But that's not enough. You got to remember, man, this whole truth is about our power and our Lord, man, because they are uh, not wanted in this world. Nobody wants any part of them, man. They don't want to acknowledge them. So this is why we bring out this word, man, because the most I was like, all right, well, look, since y'all don't want to acknowledge me, I'm going to have to make you all acknowledge me. I'm going to have to show you all that I am the power. I'm the one that puts you in this earth. I'm the one that created everything. I'm the one that puts you in situations if you go off, man. This is what's happening, man. All right? So let's get back to it. It says, verse 43, it says, In the midst of them, and in the midst of them, Salakia, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them and given them palms in their hands? So he answered the sentence to me, It is the son of the Most High whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so, so stiffly for the name of the Lord. See? And this is what we want, that victory, man. We want to actually experience our Lord, Yahweh Shah, placing a crown on our heads, man. And like I said, you can only imagine what that crown is going to look like. This is a crown that's coming from Yahweh Shah, man. We want the victory. You got to remember, all of this patience and suffering and everything that we're going through right now is all going to pay off. Don't they always say that shit in the world? <laughs> if you keep working, it's going to pay off. If you keep going to the gym, guess what? You're going to get swole. You're going to lose weight. You're going to gain the shape, gain the physique. If you keep working at a certain craft, guess what? You're going to get good at it, man. It's the same way with this truth. If we keep going and keep doing what we're supposed to do every single day, we're going to receive that victory, man. We're going to receive those new bodies. We're going to be able to see our Lord, Yahweh Shire. We're going to be able to see the angels. We're going to be able to be inside of the chariots. We're going to be able to see America burning. It's going to be a great thing, man. We all going to be singing songs, praising our Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. It's going to be a whole, like they say, it's going to be a whole vibe, man. <laughs> it's going to be a whole vibe. So this is what we fighting for, man. We fighting for that crown. Everything else in this world does not matter. Just like we read in Romans, everything else in this world does not matter. Do not be conformed to this world. This shit is getting ready to pass away. Let's go ahead again. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, <clears throat> this is um, First Corinthians chapter seven, and let's start at uh, 
Let's start at 29. It says, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. That's right. The time is short. There's only a little bit of sand left in the hourglass, man. It says, it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. That's right. Don't let women distract you, man. As we all know, we all love women. And when you come into this truth, you understand that you can have more than one. But this ain't the time to be doing that, man. You know, if you have a lot of women in your life and everything like that, that could get you to the point where you get distracted because you know what you have in your free time. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to be waiting on the Lord, man. Just like how Shah said, everything that we lost in this world, he's going to add it unto us a hundredfold. Okay, so if you didn't have any women in this world, guess what? You're going to receive that completion, whatever number that is. Just like it says in Isaiah 4 and 1, you know, seven women shall take hold of one man. And we all know the number seven represents completion. So whatever number that is, you're going to have it, man. But like I said, you got to be patient. Let's keep reading. Um, verse 30, it says, And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world has it away. And that's right. So certain things that you do in the world, you do for your benefit to a certain extent. You know, you know you got to go to work, you know, and then after that, you know, things are expensive. You may have a hobby. You may have a talent that can help you bring in more money, you know, but you're not trying to be famous or anything like that. You may do things on the side, like if you make beats, you know, you probably make beats and come home, you make beats or whatever, sell them on the, on the websites, you know, bring in some extra money or something like that, you know. And then, then at the end of the day, you know, you make sure that you still do what you're supposed to do. You still make sure that you go read, you go study, you go support the brotherhood, watch videos, you know, um, bring out your videos, keep doing the work, because that's the main focus. You got to make sure you keep doing what you're supposed to do for you. How about shimmy how shy every single day, right? And then that's it. So you don't, you don't abuse the world. You don't get to the point where you get yourself in a situation where this world is literally whooping your ass man <laughs> putting you in situations that you don't want to be in all right you're supposed to just use whatever you can in this world that's to make sure you get by that's all we want we just want our daily bread we ain't trying to be rich and we don't want we don't want to be poor like now we all poor the majority of us you know we we poor we don't have no damn money you know but at the end of the day you know we don't want to be poor as far as you know being homeless or anything like that, man. We just want enough money so we can get by and know until this Jacob's trouble time, pretty much, man. All right? So we got to understand, it says, for the fashion of this world passeth away. This world is getting ready to be gone, man. Everything that we learn in this world is getting ready to burn. It's getting ready to turn into the greatest, biggest desert of all time. All right? So at the end of the day, don't let this world get you down, man. Think about the reward. I remember Apostle Ramla was speaking about that um, some months ago or, or last year or something like that. But he's just like, man, to keep you motivated, just think about the reward that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to give us, man. That's like the scriptures say, we can't even fathom what we're going to receive. Only thing that you can really think about is the things of this world. You just think about the nice things that this world has to offer you. You know, we're getting ready to build up. But we're not going to build it up. <laughs> we already know Esau and these other heathen nations, they're going to build up our kingdom. But we're getting ready to actually have a kingdom where it's going to start from scratch, man. Everything that we see in this world is getting ready to disappear. None of the things in this world is going to be in our kingdom, man. None of it. These other countries with their buildings and their, their factories and businesses and all of these things, man, that shit going to get torn down. If it don't get hit by the missiles, that shit getting torn down, man. Our kingdom is going to start from scratch. And it's going to be beautiful. You got to remember, like the scriptures say, we're going to have streets full of gold. Man, we're going to be going into the, our palaces with all of the stones and diamonds and everything going across the doors. You, you just really can't even imagine, man. You walk in the house and you can just feel the vibration, man, because we're going to be able to actually experience life 144%, the full circle of life, man. We're going to be able to actually, you know, feel the energy from the stones, you know, actually feel how it is to be completely perfect when we don't have to wear mixed fabrics and everything like that. Because we understand mixed fabrics 
brings different frequencies, and those different frequencies can can get uh can get us sick. You know, we're just gonna be in the most perfect conditions, man. That's the reward, man. The rest. The rest. Let's get that real quick. Because you got to remember, this is not our rest. This is not our rest. You got to remember, this is what we're grinding for. This world is not our rest. All right? So let's get, um, let's see. Actually, hold on. Let me check this camera real quick. All right, cool. Now we back. All right, so like I was saying earlier, you got to remember, this is not our rest. So let's go ahead and grab that. This is Micah chapter 2. Verse 10, it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sword of destruction. If you try to find rest in this world, it's going to destroy you. For instance, the main thing that people always say or wanted to do in order for them to find true rest or true success is everybody want to become famous, right? Everybody know you. if you become famous, you can gain millions of dollars. You can live in the best neighborhoods. You know, travel around the world, do all these different things, right? And these would be a things, be like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, let me just get my talent up, you know, go to, uh, you know, go to an A and R for music, or you keep doing plays and shows or whatever, so you can get your acting, you know, uh, 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 your acting skills out there and everything like that. You know, you go to school to play basketball. You try to get into the best colleges and everything so scouts can notice you. So you can try to make it to the NBA or the NFL or whatever the case may be. All right. You do these type of things so you can find some type of rest because everybody know if you get a lot of money, there's a chance that, yeah, you can have rest because now you can take care of yourself and you don't have to worry about too much. Right. But what happens and what comes with gaining that success in this world, man? We all know that you got to sell out. You got to do unseemly things, man. Unseemly things. <laughs> you already know what I mean by unseemly. You got to you got to give you got to get rid of family members. You got to sacrifice certain uh family members, sacrifice certain friends. Do things that go against your morals. All right? No, you 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 can't even be there for your people. Here it is. You can you could probably make like 50 million dollars. Esau is going to make sure, be like, no, you cannot give back to your community. You can't do it. You know how many people that probably did want to go back and just be like, here, here's money, here's money, here's money. No, man, they can't do that shit. Now, you might see certain things like, yeah, they invested in a charity or a school or something like that, which is all bullshit. Here it is. You got all of these charities and everything around the world, and the world is still pretty much poor. The majority of the people are, steady, are pretty much still in poverty, man. Because it's bullshit. People just be giving money to shit that they think is going to make a difference, but it's not. This is Esau's rulership, man. He want to keep you at the bottom. He want to make sure that you stay at the bottom and feel it. Because at the end of the day, he wants to dominate you, man. He wants to bring in his NWO. He wants everybody to take the karagma, man. That's what it is. So when you go out there and try to find success... And everything like that. You got to remember, it is not your rest. You still going to be doing shit that's going to stress you out. Look at Mike Tyson uh, and Boosie and all of them. What he saying in that interview? He was like, man, you know, it's a reason why I always keep all these bitches around me. And you always smoke blunts and shit every damn day 24-7. And you always keep your entourage around you. He was like, because when you by yourself and you alone and you look in the mirror... Those demons, man, they come out, man. You can feel the negative and evil energy. They can feel that, man. And they're ashamed. They're ashamed because when they by themselves and they think about everything that they had to do in order for them to get in the position where they at right now, they like, damn, man, I'm fucking up. But they don't want to admit that, man. It's some celebrities that do. But at the same time, <laughs> a lot of them don't give a fuck, man. So at the end of the day, you got to remember, this is not your rest. This is not your kingdom. Just wait patiently. Wait patiently. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it, man. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be waiting for the Lord. This is Psalm chapter 37. Let's see. Uh, man, this, all, this is all good. We'll start at three, though. Uh, this is Psalm chapter 37, verse 3. It says, Trust in the Lord 
and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Kept saying it. You wait on the Lord. You do what you're supposed to do by your how about Shemi Yahweh Shah. He gonna hook you up, man. And my brother, um, Sar Sahar, he, I remember him telling me that a long time ago. He was like, man, if you niggas would start doing what's right by your how about Shemi Yahweh Shah, he'll start blessing your ass a little bit more, man. <laughs> You got to understand, we still under the curses and everything, right? So we still going to be going through things until literally Yahweh Shai comes back. But at the end of the day, now that we know the names and now that we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, hey, the Mosai can't take care of you every now and then, man. It happened to me. I pray for better things to happen in my life and the Mosai allowed it to happen. He allowed it to happen, but at the same time, he did allow a lot of chastisement to happen as well. Because I've definitely been going through a lot of chastisement these past few months. But you know, at the end of the day, still got to keep pushing and do what I can do for the Lord. All right? So at the end of the day, let's read it again. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Here's the point in verse 7. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him, of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Wait for the Lord. Patiently wait for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Resting in the Lord. You're not supposed to be worried about anything else, man. Just patiently wait for the Lord, man. Don't try to become successful on this side. Don't try to, you know, do the most. Just wait for the Lord to come back, man. He's given us the signs to let us know that he's getting ready to come back, right? Like it says in Matthew 24. He's given us the signs to let us know that he's getting ready to make his return. Let's see. This is Matthew chapter 24. And it started four, and it says, And Yahweh shall answer the said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right? So these are the things that let us know that the Lord is getting ready to come back. All right. He said, you'll see nation rising against nation, rise against nation kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and diverse places. You're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Are we not experiencing, experiencing all of these things right now? Yes, we are, man. So these are the signs that let us know that the Lord is on his way, man, because the world is crumbling right before our very eyes, man. It's crumbling. It's literally holding on by the little string. <laughs> a little stream, man. You know, you watch the cartoons, and then uh, they be having a, uh, one of the cartoons hold up every single thing on their back, or they'll hold every single thing up, and they'll be like anvils and big-ass boulders <laughs> and shit like that. And they'll be, it'll be stacked to the damn sky. But as soon as, you know what I'm saying... That uh, the last little thing that make them get to the point where they tip over, everything that's falling on their face, they get that one little ass feather. <laughs> they get that little weak ass feather and they put it up on there and then they like, oh, okay, it's too much. That's America, man. America is always about to feel that last feather. <laughs> that feather about to fuck them up. It's a lot here, but that's what it is, man. That's what it is. They can't hold on any more, any longer, man. The word is out here, and Esau has heard about that. He don't he don't want this word to get out, but it's too late, man. This is the this is the plans of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Let's get that too. Like I said, because this is like I said, I always like reading this. I bring this out all the time, man. Isaiah fifty five. This is Isaiah chapter fifty five. And. Let's start at, <laughs> we're going to start at 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. 
Call ye upon him while he is near. The Most High is near. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is near. Seek him while he may be found. How do you know that he can be found? Because you're hearing his word. You're seeing the prophets, starting with the apostles, all the way on down. You're seeing them doing the work. You're hearing the people go out there bringing out the word, right? This is how you know that the Lord is near because the Lord is using this man to bring out his word so you can hear him. That's why this, that's why Yahweh Shah said, his sheep will hear my voice. This is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah speaking through us. All right. Verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our power, for he would abundantly pardon. Forsake your way. See? Forsake your way. Do what you're supposed to do, but Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And what is he going to do? He's going to hook you up, man. He's going to hook you up. He's going to have mercy upon you. That's the number one thing that we want. Of course, if you think about the kingdom, you think about all of the goodies that come with it and everything like that. Of course, we're excited for that. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Yeah, we want, we want to experience it at all. But the first thing that we want first is mercy. We're getting ready to see the world be judged, man. It's about to be bloodshed everywhere. Everywhere, man. <laughs> It's about to be crazy out here, man. But this is what the people don't understand because they don't fear the Lord, though. But like it says, if you forsake your wicked ways, the most I can take care of you, man. He will what? Abundantly pardon. He'll make sure. He'll tell the angels, don't, hey, make sure he good. Make sure she good. Make sure that family over there is good. Make sure the miracles perform, is performed for them, man. That's what we want first, man. We want mercy. Verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The words of the Lord is going to prosper, is not going to return unto him void, meaning empty. He's not going to have us go out here and say all of these things for it not to happen. He's not going to have us go out there and say all of these things for all of these things to not happen, man. We're telling the world America is about to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction because of World War III. We're telling the world that the Karagma is on the way and they're going to make it mandatory. And if you take the Karagma, you're going to have to feel Revelation 14 and 9. That's what that's what we're telling y'all, man. We're telling y'all that the Lord is getting ready to come back with the angels and he's coming back to destroy, man. He's coming back with a sword. He's not coming back with a smile on his face. He's not coming back like the Kool-Aid man so everybody can share a big-ass glass of high fruit toss and cheer everybody, man. <laughs> no, man. The red liquid that the Yahweh Shai wants is going to get ready to come from you people that's wicked, man. That's what's getting ready to happen, man. It says, it shall not return unto me void. Everything that we're saying is going to happen. It's been happening. Remember when 2020 happened and then everything would seem like it was just going to shit? Stores didn't really have any food. People were out there rioting, burning down buildings. All kind of shit was going on, right? All kind of shit was going on. And then people was like, man, yeah, you know those, those dudes on the corner? Yeah, man, they were right. They were right. You had all kind of people watching the, the videos then. <laughs> Everybody was on it. Everybody was on it. You saw the uh, things happening in Australia where the, the police was breaking into the people's houses and taking them out of their houses for whatever reason. Then I remember uh, the elder Manata Zakba from South Carolina, he did a video entitled, um, What Should We Do If They Come For Us? I remember before he started, he said, whoa, because he saw all the people looking forward to what he had to say because of that situation because people felt what was going on in the world man they felt that shit they was like damn man it's getting real out here what we gonna do what we say we was gonna do we gonna wait on the lord we're not gonna do nothing what can we do think about that what can you do other than preach you can't do nothing we in esau's prime right now man 
He got all the weapons, all the technology, all the money. What, what are you really going to do? Nothing. All you think you're going to do is keep faith. That's what you need to do, man. Keep faith. Verse 12, it says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall bring forth. Uh, shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign, and shall not be cut off. All right? So that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Everything that the Mosai said is going to happen is getting ready to happen. But a lot of you all are witnessing this right now, man. Hold on. Let me wait for this ad to go out. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll just start at the top. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That's right. It's going to come as a thief in the night to the people that's not watching. Because like the most I said, we're supposed to be watchmen for the house of Israel. This is why we upload the videos. We bring out, this is like the <laughs> like Elder Hawaii from North Carolina, uh, Shalom. You're like, in the news, <laughs> in the news, man. We're telling you all what's going on, showing you all what's going on. We're filtering it through the scriptures so you all can possibly feel the fear of your how about Shimmy how was shy, man. Showing you all and giving examples like, look, this is what happened to this lady. This is what happened to this brother. This is what happened to this man. This is what happened to this family. This is what happened to this infant baby. Look how tragic they went out of the world and everything like that. Look at what's going on around the world. Look at the uproars of the people. Look at Elon Musk doing what he's doing, saying what he's going to test out in the next six months. We bringing it out, man. So like I said, it's going to come as a thief in the night to the people that's not paying attention. If you're not paying attention, like I said, if you keep being stuck in this world and paying attention to the things that's going to, quote unquote, help you prosper in the world, you're not going to make it, man. Why? What does it say right here in verse 3? It says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, man. Nobody's not going to escape. Right now, this is what they're promising you. They're promising you peace and safety. Like I said, when it was 2020, people, people was like, I need to get it right, right? All kind of people was like, man, this happened, and them prophets was correct. But as soon as you know the thing that was out here, as soon as that faded away, as soon as that faded away, what happened? People would start to get it back to quote unquote normal. <laughs> Let me check this camera real quick. Alright, so yeah, people started getting back to quote unquote normal, right? He was like, oh, okay, man, you know, this is fading away. They're starting to let us go back to wrestling events, football games, basketball games. The gym is back open. We go back to the bar. We can have big, crowded events again. Hey, man, they like, well, we good. We ain't got to worry about nothing. All right? And like I said, now we in the holiday season. Everybody getting ready to celebrate that. And then they, they, and Esau always makes sure that you stay distracted with all kind of things, right? Because he gets you to the point where... You know, they show you all these new trailers for movies and video games, and they always get you hyped for things that's in the future. They be like, yeah, this is coming out um, June 2023, or this this is coming out uh, in 2023 or 2024, you know, and look forward to that and everything like that. It's trying to get you to think that you're actually going to make it to that time, man. The time of Jacob's trouble could be next year, which a lot of brothers, you know, believe that it could be. I believe that it could be, because like I always say, Apostle Zahar named this year the, the year of the turn up, right? And everything been turning up. It's been turning up. So where do we go from here? <laughs> where do we go from here, man? Like I said, we don't know, but next year could definitely be the year where, hey, it's going to turn up even more. And if it turns up even more, that means we're getting ready to experience uncomfortable things. But it's it's for a cause, though. It's for the best, man. We got to get up out of here. In order for us to get up out of here, we need the destruction, right? So, hey, we got to make sure we stay on point. Like it says in verse 4 right here, it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. 
Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. We are not of the night, man. Why? Because we have the Spirit upon us. We have the Holy Spirit upon us. We, are, we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This is why the scriptures say, let your light so shine before men. Because we go out there, we bring out this good news, which is the gospel. And we let this knowledge shine before the world, man. We let everybody see it. Everybody see it. All right? That way, the script, like the scriptures say, nobody can be without excuse. So, and there ain't going to be no excuse, man. Okay, so lock it. It ain't going to be no excuse, man. It's going to get to the point where you just like... Hey, when things happen, you can't say that we ain't warn you. You can't say that we didn't warn you. Everybody heard about the Israelite thing now, man. This is this is mainstream now, man. And that was the most high. Using certain celebrities to bring this out. So then Jake can actually have to start thinking to themselves like, man, is this actually true? Because you already know how it is when people listen to um to celebrities. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. See if I can find it real quick. When when it, when a, when a celebrity say something, then everybody like, oh yeah yeah, I believe you, I believe you. But then you know, people regular people like us, as soon as we tell you the things that's getting ready to go down, then it's just like, ah uh, no, nah, I can't believe y'all, and that's wild, man. I don't know if I, I don't know if I. Uh... Let's see if I can Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to. Uh, I'll probably get it later. I forget when that scripture is, and I just read it not too long ago. But it's all good. But at the end of the day, you know, this is what it is, man. You know, people listen to celebrities, so that's why that movie, um, Hebrews and Negroes, blew up so much, man. Because Jake was like, "Hold on, Kyrie Irving saying that we Israelites. Kyrie Irving saying that we Hebrews. Let me go watch this movie and see what it's about." You know, and like a lot of people, a lot of people watched it. Amazon made all kind of bread off of that movie, man. All kind of bread, because Jake was interested. So the thing that Esau did, thinking that, hey, you know, he was trying to make a move so this troop can take a take a step back, it actually blew up in their face, man. It blew up in their face. It's over with. Like the scriptures say, you can't do anything against the truth, only for it, man. Only for it, all right? So let's get uh let's get one last scripture and then we're gonna close it out. We're gonna get um hold on Salakia. We're gonna get let's go to Sirach chapter one. Hold on, stop tweaking. There you go. We're gonna go to Sirach chapter one and let's start at uh twenty. It says, the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. If you fear the Lord, you'll have a long life, because what does fearing the Lord does? The fear that you have the fear of the Lord upon you, you're going to start doing what he told you to do. And what he told us to do was follow the commandments, statutes, and laws. If you follow the commandments, statutes, and laws, he'll prolong your life. Now, we understand that we can't keep them perfectly here, but we do try them, okay? And that's what the Most High is looking for, because that's a way of you showing your faith. Verse 21, it says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, and turneth away wrath. A furious man cannot, cannot be justified, for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. A patient man will tear for, for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. <laughs> Woo! If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. All right? So this is what the whole thing is about, man. Fearing Yahweh by showing Yahweh shot. If you do not fear the Lord, you're not going to make it, man. You're not going to make it. That's why Isaiah 33 and 6 says, uh, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy times, man. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. When the, MOTV is, when the MOTB is mandatory 
and everything like that, the first thing we're going to think about is the Lord. When Esau comes in and, you know, runs in front of our face and tells us to do these things, the first thing we're going to think about is the Lord. The Lord said, hey, everybody's going to be tried, right? But we got to follow the Lord. We got to keep faith no matter how threatened we are, man. Esau coming, you know, running your face with an automatic shotgun or whatever the case may be. You got to have faith, man. You got to call upon the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and have faith within the Lord that he's going to get you out of that situation. You know, because at the end of the day, you do not want to take the karagma, man. You do not want to take that. You want to make sure that you endure until the end. All right. So that's what this is all about, man. It's all about fearing Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Hey, so like I said, I'm going to end it with that. So, hey, I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Rod says, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.